So let's talk about Gatorade. Um, it's been an interesting few years. Um, initially, Gatorade was suffering from lagging sales um, stemming from the recession. Um, since then, it's launched sort of a new line of products under the G series. Mm -hmm. Um, it's suffered a little bit of backlash with the introduction of sort of the new branding, which yeah. went to just the G, and also the line of products. It you know it raised some skepticism in the market mm -hmm. and some confusion. Mm -hmm. um, in the midst of all this, you were elevated to oversee global marketing. Yeah. Um, so to ha bring us up to speed. Kind of tell me a little bit about you know the challenges that you've been facing in recent years. Mm -hmm. What you've been doing to sort of um, ride it out and, and work through these challenges that you guys have been mm -hmm. facing. Well, it, the story really does start with the recession, because I think what happened for Gatorade was we, we did see a very sudden drop-off mm -hmm. um, in sales, but what was actually underneath that drop-off was the fact that over the years preceding it, we'd really taken the franchise just a little bit broader than we should have. So instead mm -hmm. of selling, really focusing on athletic consumers who use it for athletic performance, we'd just like gone broader and broader and broader because we could because right. in the days before the recession if you remember the whole country was just booming and you know you could get away with sales that maybe you shouldn't have had in the first place sure. so of course when the economic recession hit a lot of these people we'd bought into the franchise who had no real athletic need for the product suddenly in tough economic times these rented consumers is what we call them they turn to the thing that comes out of their tap that's free and so they're like, hmm. you know what, that's that's an easier option for me to, to go to. So for us, it was a very sudden um, and dramatic, you know, uh, drop off in sales. But we actually realized that we had this amazing opportunity to reinvent the business and actually grow in a really healthy way mm -hmm. if we just be went back to our core consumers. So and define that core consumer. Yeah, so the core consumer for us is um, athletic consumers, obviously, and actually the bullseye for Gatorade is 13 to 17 year old athletic consumers. So those who are really um, intently pursuing athletic achievement, be it you know in team sports, individual sports, et cetera. And what we found is once we started to have conversations with these you know athletes, as opposed to talking to the um, decliners that were never meant to be in the franchise in the first place, once you actually went back to the athletic consumers and said, well, talk to me about Gatorade, how do you feel about Gatorade? Mm -hmm. What we heard over and over again was, I love this brand, I trust this brand, but gee, I wish you'd make a few more products for me because I don't just have hydration needs. And we were like, there's an idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I would say that the transformation and the reinvention of Gatorade was 100% informed by the consumer. So in this focus on, you know, um athlete consumers, mm -hmm. consumers who are athletes, where do traditional sports play a role? Well, it's really interesting because I think, again, when we went back to looking at the landscape we had a right to play in, I would say, if I was critical on our team, all of us would say that we were very narrow in how we were defining sport before. So we were very team sport focused. Mm -hmm. Frankly, we were very male team sport focused. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't until we started, again, looking at the entire U.S. population and just saying where, who's active and who isn't and how do you define athletic. Sure. And it starts to actually lead you into really interesting territories like um, skateboarding is a great example. It's a community that we've gotten into this year. Those, um, those athletes, they won't describe themselves as athletes, like they're more just kids playing around. But boy, when you look at what their bodies are doing, right. they are very athletic. Another one is dance. Like this has been a really, really fun um, community that we've gotten into this year where this is, again, some of their um, the, the dancers that we've brought into the franchise. It's funny when we take them through the Gatorade Sports Science Institute and compare their testing athletically to a football player, they're right up there, neck and neck. You know, these they're unbelievably athletic people yeah. and they have the same physiological needs. So we're starting to just understand the broader landscape of sport and the different needs that different athletes have. So how would you define your brand goal, your goal for the brand globally? I mean, what would, where would you like the brand to be one year from now? Well, we, we've we said internally we want to be the world leader in innovative sports nutrition. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we, you know, we're very focused on that. Like we actually don't think any other brand out there really has the ability and the right to do what we are, we are trying to do right now. So. That's what it's all focused on. You uh, were actually, Forbes named you one of the most powerful women in sports in 2009. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, what do you 
you think it takes for a woman to be powerful in sports, in the sports industry? It's an interesting question. Um, because I think a lot of, um, I find when I go around the industry and, and talk to athletes and, and agents and trainers and you know, people in the business, people are surprised how many women actually work at Gatorade. And Gatorade has a long history of women who have led the brand. And I think for a brand that is very typically thought of as you know a guy's brand, I think that's surprising to people. But I think it's because all of us have the same approach that it really doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, as long as you're focused really deeply on the authenticity of athletes and sport and what it takes to improve athletic performance, that's pretty much all it takes to, to get there. So 